Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Corey McKinney. Tonight, we're going to be learning about the Gegen Press, or as Luke likes to call it, the Gen Gen Press. What is Gen Gen Pressing? And I'm so happy that at least one of you told him that that's the way it's pronounced uh, and that I'm saying it right on the first go. Now, um, the only thing I know about the Gegen Press is, and I could be wrong about this, but we're about to learn, so I'm just taking some shots from the hip. I think Jurgen Klopp is the one who uh, who, who innovates it or who uses it the most in the the uh, Premier League. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he was a he used it a lot in uh, in Bundesliga uh, when he was c managing there, and so. I'm almost positive that he's the one who kind of got the ball rolling here in the Premier League. Um, I don't know what it is tactically, though. I don't know how it plays out. Uh, I do know this, though. Um, for pressing in American football, you know, it's like a real physical style of play um, where – you know, you're, you're manning up on somebody, you're, you're picking somebody and sticking with them the whole time. And basketball, which I think this one's probably going to relate closer to if I if I had my guess. Um, in basketball, you have the full court press where you can press and, and basically what you're trying to do is lock down um, somebody who is trying to advance the ball up the court and essentially force them to make a mistake. And so I, I, I guarantee you that that's what, in my mind, that's what I think Gegen pressing would be um, in, in football. So we're going to see. We're going to see, though, this first video um, is brought to us by Football Meta, and it is the High Press Explained, um, the best counter to build up. And this is Gegen pressing Football Tactics. So let's do this. In our last video, we covered the benefits of building from the back line, as it creates space further up the pitch for the strikers to exploit. Before you watch today's video, I highly suggest you check that video out to see why teams employ that tactic because today we're looking at the best counter to build up the high press. Now, before we go any further, it's important to understand the concept of pressing and how it's developed over the years. Pressing is when the defending team put pressure on the opposition, either by closing them down, closing down the players around them, or by forcing the opposition to make a specific play that is easier to stop. It's an active part of the game that requires every player to move together and block off certain areas of the pitch. During a press, the players will have a different task depending on their position. The attackers will usually look to put pressure on the opposition defenders by chasing them down. The midfielders will look to block passing lanes and shadow mark the opposition's midfielders. Okay. And the defenders will need to maintain the defensive line, moving up and down along with the team to squeeze the space available to play. The defending team can choose to initiate their press at any time. A high block will immediately put pressure on defenders and goalkeepers. A mid-block will look to start their press near the center and will aim to stop the midfielders from having time and space on the ball, while a low defensive block, also known as parking the bus, will aim to completely limit the space in front of goal. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be focusing mostly on the high block structure, as this is the most... Okay, so that low block structure, uh, I was just watching Ted Lasso and in it, um, the wonder kid, as he calls himself, uh, says in, in one of their games, that's a real big deal for them. We need to park the bus. We need to park the bus. And I've heard that phrase before. Um, and I think I know it. I thought I knew what that was. And, and, and I think if I would have saw it like in play, I could probably point it out. But hearing him explain it like that made it much easier to visualize in my mind. That's exactly what that is, is, is quite literally everybody parks the bus right in front of the goal and, uh, and, and prevents, um, shots being made. So, um, I, I like that the press can be implemented in really these three different ways, the high block, mid block, and then the low. Um, and I, I think though, probably the most effective one, if, if, if I was, if I were to implement it or to think about it, if you like, if you turn the ball over or whatever, um, and you're you just try to score uh, a goal, but you turn the ball over, I feel like the high block or the high press uh, would be the best one to implement. So I'm glad that that's the one that he's focusing on right now because I feel like that mid block is probably a little risky, and then parking the bus. I mean, you don't really put yourself in offensive advantage if you do get the ball right, and I guess that might be the the whole premise of it is you're not really trying to move the ball anymore. You're parking the bus in order that you just don't allow any more goals to be scored because you're you're comfortable where you're at. Um, but I feel like the high block is probably the high the high risk high reward, whereas the mid block might be the riskiest one. Uh, so this high block one seems cool, and, and and it is that same concept that we were talking about with with basketball, where you kind of pick somebody, lock them down, you try to you try to shorten the length of the uh, court. Right, this high block, you'll see them do this 
If you watch basketball when they uh, have a full court press, as soon as they go to inbound the ball, somebody is on that player, they're on the next player, they'll try to trap them in a corner and make them make a bad pass across the court. And it's crazy how often it works. Sometimes I feel like if players would just breathe for a minute, uh, that they would be able to to make a better decision. But but here in football, the game is just constantly moving and constantly moving. You don't really have time to, to think sometimes. So I could see how this could be a really intimidating part of the game if a team does it well. So I'm excited to learn more. It's common in the high press. However, if the low and mid block is something you'd like to see, then let me know in the comments down below. The pressing game is by no means an innovative tactic and has been around for many decades, but the style and frequency has changed drastically in the past few years, thanks to possession hungry managers such as Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola and Julian Nagelsmann. These managers and their teams aim to dominate the game by retaining the ball as much as possible. And the best yeah. way to do this is to regain possession as soon as you've lost it. In the 1970s, Renus Michael's legendary Dutch team took the world by storm with their aggressive pressing game, and is something that looks rather outdated when compared to the structure of a modern day press. A decade later, an Arrigo Sacchi's AC Milan would dominate the club scene with a similarly aggressive pressing game. Needless to say, there's not a one size fits all approach to the press, and each team will have their own unique ways of forcing the opposition into giving up possession. But there are a few key components that are present within each pressing move. Pressing triggers and pressing traps. A pressing trigger is a set of circumstances. Before we get into the uh, different different sides of this, I like that he kind of went down through the history of things. One, it makes sense that Pep is, is implementing this with all the talent that he has on his squad all the time. It feels like if anybody was going to be able to implement the press well, it would be him because one, he has the mind for it, but two, he also has the personnel for it. Um, but also, I like that 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 football meta here, of which if you are not subscribed to this channel, please go do it. Football meta is incredible. I don't even I don't know this guy uh, personally, but one day I hope to meet him because he has been coaching me through this journey of football and understanding the tactical side of things. So I'm very grateful for him. Uh, but breaking down that history and kind of seeing like the 70s, for example, there is no way that the way that they're pressing would work today. It just, it, it couldn't. There's too much talent on the field, I feel like. Not to say that there wasn't them, but I feel like now it's just different. Um, and so to kind of see how it's morphed and changed and uh, to, to know that this isn't something that, you know, somebody invented out of nowhere. This is something that's just been revitalized over the years. It's, it's cool to know. It's the act as a prompt for a team to initiate their press. A lot of these may seem pretty obvious and intuitive. However, it is fundamental for the team to consistently recognize these patterns. Some examples include a bad touch or a bad pass, a moment of hesitation or when the receiving player has their back to goal. All these should be cues for the player closest to the ball to start closing down the space immediately and will need to be supported by his teammates to effectively limit the space needed to move the ball. That's right, especially coming off of a bad pass because the the player is now trying to fumble around and get better possession of the ball. So if they're already they don't have their head up looking downfield, most likely they're probably looking at or looking down the pitch. They're probably looking at their feet or they're trying to you know figure out what's going on and they're trying to get their their uh, their head back in 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 play or whatever. And so if you can put pressure on them, that's when you're going to force the most mistakes. That makes a lot of sense. Forward. However, not all mistakes should lead to a press and the defending team will need to check their yeah. shape before aggressively closing down the opposition. As if not enough players are ready to move, then this will just lead to the team leaving dangerous gaps that can be exploited. Which defeats the whole purpose of it. Secondly, pressing traps are a more tactical method of forcing the opposition into an uncomfortable position. They usually require more organization and are tougher to execute, as you are not relying on the opposition making a mistake. Mm. An example could be closing the center of the pitch and forcing play out wide where it's easier to defend as the pressing team can use the touchline as an extra yeah, defender. that's a good idea. Or the defending team. It's so cool. I, I keep pausing this a lot, but you guys are just going to have to work with me. So it's so cool, though, that, that he's talking about the, uh, the, the out-of-bounds line, gosh, whatever it's called in football. Um because that's what that's what I was coached in American football as a defensive back, somebody who was guarding receivers. You know, if they're if they're trying to press too hard, you can get as physical as you want within a certain amount of yards, and so you can actually you know push them or lead them to the OB line and use that as another defender because they can't step out of bounds because if they do, they're now ineligible. And so in this same situation, you know, if you force the play out wide, you can press out and and make it to where uh, they can't go anywhere. They have to force it back into play, and if you've got the middle of the field locked down 
then you've already set them up for a disastrous time of trying to get the ball around. So it makes a lot of sense. This is a dangerous way to do it, though, uh, because all it takes is one slip up to screw that up in the middle of the field. And now you've just opened up the sides and and you have middle of the field play and everything. You've just blown it wide open. And so implementing this would definitely take some guys who are well-rounded. I don't feel like you could just – tell any team hey um you guys need to try this out or anything like that like this will take a team that's been practicing it probably probably for a couple seasons together like a core team of of guys to, to be able to do that because that looks like something that's strategically very difficult especially when there is no stoppage right in american football you can implement a lot of plays and a lot of different schemes and stuff like that because you have stoppage time you can gather the defense around and say hey guys this is how we're going to implement this but live in game as a manager is trying to yell this out or like maybe i don't know they've communicated it beforehand that at this time you're going to do this this takes a lot of coordination and a lot of functionality and it, and it actually makes me appreciate this game so much more to be able to do this without that stoppage time is crazy it will seemingly allow a player in midfield to receive the ball before being closed down by multiple players an alternative could see them leave the opposition player completely unmarked but will effectively close down all the passing options available forcing either a difficult pass or an individual play from the attacker both triggers and traps are essential for any effective press, and is here where we see the true genius of some of the best managers in the modern game, with their own unique approach to regaining possession. To gain a good understanding of the different ways of pressing, we're going to be taking a look at three key managers, Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola and Julian Nagelsmann. These three managers aim to achieve similar results with their high press, however there are a few differences in how they're executed. Let's start with Jurgen Klopp. Firstly, to truly this understand cool. Jurgen Klopp's style of pressing, it's important to understand the concept of gegenpressing. Gegenpressing or counterpressing is a tactic in which after losing possession, the team will immediately attempt to win the ball back, rather than regrouping and allowing the opposition mm. to settle. The main idea behind this is that the opposition is at its most vulnerable as soon as they have the ball, as the team will rarely be correctly set up to start their attack immediately. At Liverpool, we can see how the Okay, ding, ding, ding. Bells are going off in my head. So gagging pressing is even uh, even more specific style of pressing. It's not just pressing in general. It's this specific way of doing it um, that, that Klopp is implementing. Um, wow, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, I thought that maybe that just meant press and uh, it had some German slang to it or something like that. So this is cool. This is cool to know this. And uh, I feel really ignorant now that I uh, introduced this video like this. So I'd like to apologize to all of you. And uh, we're going to keep going because I don't know what to do with myself now front three players will dictate the direction in which the opposition need to play the ball. Firmino will shadow mark the holding midfielder. The wingers, Salah and Mane, will position themselves between the centre backs and the full backs, forcing a play inside, where the two midfielders will mark the opposition midfielders, meaning the team in possession is immediately forced to go long or to play the ball out wide, where Liverpool can force them yep. into a tough spot near the, the touch line. line. Okay. If the opposition is fooled into playing the ball into the midfield, then this is where Liverpool are at their most dangerous. As if they regain possession, the positioning of Mane and Salah in the half space is a tricky one to stop, and Klopp's team can immediately create a yeah. dangerous opportunity. At Liverpool, the fullbacks also play a very important role during the press, and either Robertson or Trent Alexander-Arnold will yeah, join in on the sense. press along with the strikers and the wingers. With one joining in, the other will move more centrally and form a back right. three with the centre backs to ensure the team has enough cover for any potential long balls. So the main idea behind Klopp's style of press is to immediately create chances for the strikers and maintain the ball in the opposition's final third. Now, while Pep Guardiola's style of press is just as effective, there are a few differences in what he's trying to achieve. Pep Guardiola's main objective is to keep possession of the ball for as much as possible. And instead of wanting that. to immediately create a scoring opportunity, Guardiola's team will look to restart their attacks. By doing this, Manchester City can ensure they have more control of the ball and can dictate play in a more organized and structured manner. On the pitch, this translates to a less aggressive initial press, but with more players blocking any possible passing lanes and force possession into a specific area. For example, with one of the center backs on the ball, the striker will apply just enough pressure to force a play. The wingers will cover the centre backs and the midfielders will cover any passes into the centre. Meaning the only realistic option is for the defender to go long to the striker, where the defending team can regain possession and start their attacks from this position. Yep. Once again, forcing the ball long. Uh, and I feel like in any sport where 
you know the the objective American football might be the only the only uh, thing here that's different, and maybe like ultimate frisbee. Uh, where you don't mind throwing it long because if somebody can catch it, then you know there's a score there. But as far as passing the ball goes and passing sports, uh, I'm thinking particularly basketball and here in football, um, it's never a good idea to try to look that far up the court or that far up the pitch. And so when you force these passes that far up, man, can some mistakes be made. And uh, I can really see how this could screw a team up. What I don't, what I'm not understanding though. And, and maybe I'm, I'm looking at this too simplified, this may be because I've never played before, is why the option of just kind of moving it back and forth with each other or even the other team trying to implement their own form of, you know, kind of uh, tiki-taka on the fly to kind of get around this idea, like to move the ball up a little bit, like if you zigzag it up the pitch. Um, I don't – maybe that would work, maybe that wouldn't. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think because, like, he – as a as a player, you know you look at it and you go, man, my only options uh, up the field. But you do have other guys next to you, and maybe if you pass the ball around a little bit, you can catch somebody slipping. And maybe that's how you beat the the press. I don't know. Um, that I'm just as I'm looking at this from a like a like a coach's perspective or whatever. I, I would wonder if that wouldn't be an effective way to get around it. But um, cool nonetheless. Guardiola is also a key proponent of the six second rule in which he instructs his players to regain possession within wow. six seconds after losing it. It's one of the main reasons Gosh. as to why Manchester City always have such high possession stats compared yeah. to other teams. Finally, newly appointed Bayern Munich manager Julian Nagelsmann is also known for his rather aggressive pressing tactics. Firstly, Bayern Munich will look to play with a very high line, aided by the sweeper keeper Emmanuel Neuer. Their 4-2-3-1 formation will often morph into more of a lopsided 4-4-2 with Sané pushing high alongside Lewandowski and will look to cover the centre-back pair. Müller has excellent spatial awareness and will make sure there is no chance of central progression, meaning the only viable option is to the fullbacks. However, from here, Nabry can close the space down and now Bayern Munich can have four players around the ball and will make it very difficult wow. to get out. Nagelsmann has tended to adopt a more man-oriented press That's, okay. and rather than specifically cutting out key passing lanes, Will apply a lot of pressure on the yep so that uh that's exactly what i was about to say right before he said how they implement that kind of man thing i'm like it looks like it looks like that's not too far away from man coverage and so that idea of you know you're focusing solely on one player is exactly what you get in american football particularly from defensive backs and sometimes outside linebackers as and maybe even middle from time to time uh when you when you see uh this man coverage implemented uh or this this defensive press you know uh from the american football side of things is there you're literally locking down one man your eyes are on him you're not worried about anybody else like that's your guy and you're trying to force him to make a mistake in the same way you see this guy this being introduced uh or implemented in, at, at fc uh Bayern munich so um really cool to me to see that because i'm seeing some relation between the two sports that i am loving the most right now so really awesome stuff hey i receiving the ball if they're able to turn over possession, then Sane's advanced position yeah. can immediately create danger, as his excellent dribbling and pace mean he can immediately threaten goal or look mm. to pick out Lewandowski in the box. Nagelsmann has somehow injected more energy into an already impressive Bayern Munich squad, who look to dominate games with possession and verticality. Now, the list doesn't end there, and obviously there are plenty of other managers with their own unique approach to the high press. But will usually come down to these two categories, either looking to immediately start a counter-attack or to regain possession and start the attack from the back line. And now let me know what you think. What's your favorite style of press and who is your favorite manager that uses this tactic? Let me know in the comments down below. Yeah, I would like to know that too. Uh, out of the three that he mentioned, I know there are other ones out there, um, but you guys tell me who's your favorite manager that, that does this. Uh, because I, I would like to see more of this and pay attention to this live in game. Like I'm sure that as I continue to watch these matches, that I'm going to see this live and I'm going to go, oh man, this is awesome. Uh, you know, because I'm finally seeing it play out. But um, I want to know who I can be looking for to, to see this because I'm beginning to think that because of how much I love defense and how much I love this aggressive style of defensive play, that maybe the Gagan Press is going to be something that. Uh, 
I might enjoy more uh, watching than anything else because I feel like that's just a really cool way of locking down um, an offensive uh, attack. And, and man, I, if you can shut a team down, if you can cut the field in half and make it feel like they can never get past you, uh, you start getting in their head and playing the mental mind game, like you can really mess a team up. And uh, I feel like this might be one of the reasons why some of these teams are so dominant, um, like Manchester City. Uh, with Pep over there, like, of course they're dominating teams. If they're cutting the field in half and they're doing it efficiently with really good talent and things like that, of course they're able to to, to mess with teams and to blow them out of the water. Like, who's going to touch them? Who's going to touch them? And so uh, with, the, with that same key in mind, you know, um, I feel like that if you have the team and the personnel to be able to do this, this might be something that every team needs to implement. Now, that could be a very uh, – ignorant statement for me for a lot of you guys because a lot of you guys might say the press sucks and i hate any team that uses it because of x y and z you know but let me know about it because i'm still learning and uh and 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 if you pose an argument that's good enough for me i'll take it into consideration i might even find a video about what you're talking about hey thank you so much for joining with me today as i learn about this um it's been a really cool journey for me going through the tactics of uh this side of football and and really digging into what the play style is like it's making me be able to enjoy the game even more and what i'm what i'm starting to learn is a lot of you guys uh i say a lot some of you have been watching football for nearly your entire lives and and some of the things that i'm learning now you haven't even learned before and so i'm kind of learning these things with you guys and it's been really cool you know i love it when lifelong fans discover new things about the game in any sport and so uh thank you for joining along on this journey with me and uh, i hope that you continue to like comment subscribe to the channel uh join membership if you haven't that would help me out a lot it's cheap and uh, it's, it's an easy way to support me month to month. Uh, and I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.